Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, and this is my favorite session, I have to tell you. It's all about academics, and some of my favorite people on campus are, have joined us today, um, and we'll get to their introductions in just a few minutes. Um, I have looked through the names, and it looks like most everyone's names are uh, very recognizable. So um, could I see a show of hands if uh, we have anyone who is here for the first time? All right, um, looks like we have return guests. My name is Vinita Dillon and I am the director for new students and family programs. And that's how I stay connected with you. Um, and today our topic is academics, but before we hop in to uh, talk with our presenters, I just want to briefly and very fast cover what to expect on the 20th, which is you'll arrive at your designated time, you'll be directed to park in lot O, and from there you'll walk into what we call PIAC, Physical Education and Aquatic Center, and once you uh, enter that building, we will welcome you, give your student a check-in um, package, and then we will send them off to pick up their uniforms in a big black and yellow topped tote bag, a tote box. And uh, while they are picking up their uniforms, um, the parents will be invited to uh, meet with some of the people in person that they've seen uh, over the course of the summer orientation and maybe some new people. Uh, give us a chance to introduce ourselves and um, welcome you and answer any questions that we didn't cover over summer. Um, and then uh, within 30 minutes of you having arrived at your designated check-in time, um, we'll uh, want you to be driving up to your designated rest hall. Once you arrive there, the driver will stay in the car and uh, everyone else in the car will hop off and go um, get your student set up. If you have received uh, a letter that, or I, sh I shouldn't say if, I know that the letter you received uh, said no one else except the student can go in the res hall. That is a little outdated. Please do not be worried about it. You'll be able to go in and be with your student in the room, get them set up. Um, and the driver can, will have to drive away and they can come back to the res hall uh, later to visit the room and your student. Uh, remember to dress in layers and very comfortable shoes. You'll be walking around a lot. Um, no matter what time you are um, coming onto campus, at two o'clock, we would uh, want you to be at the quad. Please get uh, familiarize yourself with uh, the campus map. Uh, at the quad, the students will be practicing formation while the families will be um, enjoying a, a very brief reception. And then from the reception, they will go inside the auditorium that's adjacent to the quad and um, be with the president and our campus leadership. When you come back out, your student will be in formation and we will have a capping ceremony. From there, which ends about 3.30, uh, you'll have until 6.30, not 10, only till 6.30, to um, go back to your student's room if that's what you want to do, get a bite to eat, and then also um, run any errands. Uh, between 6.30 and 7 for sure, we want your student to be able to make any uniform changes. So if they picked up a medium and that doesn't work, they want a different size, they'll need to be going into back into PIAC and swapping out any sizes. Very important to ensure you have time to do that. Um, I'm very, very excited to share that we will have our dining hall open for lunch as well as dinner. I'm really excited that we were able to pull this off so you won't have to go off campus. We'll have food right here, which has not been the case in previous um, orientation. So I'm just so excited that we will have that option for you here. Yeah, Crystal's excited too. Um, and um, with that, uh, I think I've covered most of the housekeeping. Oh, yes, please uh, keep your devices on mute. And you know, I just realized when I ask uh, the devices to be on mute, you can be you can turn on your camera, we'd love to see your faces. I see your names uh, time and again. So turn on your cameras and we can see you as you can see us. 
Um, but with that, I will um, ask our presenters to introduce themselves and then kind of share um, what they do on campus and how much interaction they have with their students. And then presenters just kind of after your um, initial conversation, just give parents any pertinent information that's important to them and not so much their student. Um, and again, the reminder that your audience are families. Um, with that, um, I'll just go popcorn. Always happy to have a cadet on board. So I'll start with Sarah Yi. Hi everyone, I'm Sari um, Alonzo. I am a senior marine engineering student. I'm doing my last semester here at Cal Maritime. Um, I am here because I'm one of the tutors um, on campus. I usually do Math 100, so that's usually like the introductory math for um, that a lot of freshmen will be in. Um, I also play a different role, a couple different roles on campus. Um, uh, for any engineers that are coming in, I might be one of their welding TAs because I'm also a welding TA on campus. And if they don't see me there, um, they could always find me at the bookstore. But yeah. And also my tip for you parents is that your kids will be okay here. I promise you that. I've made it out and it's a really, really good school. You guys made a good choice. All right, Crystal. Hello, everybody. I'm Crystal. I am in university advising. Um, we're not called academic advising because we're kind of academic advising and life coaches. So we're university advising. And, and what that means is um, we help students, you know, from the day that they start and maybe they need to make some schedule changes, we can help with that. We help with degree planning. Um, but we also help with resources. So if your student doesn't know where to go, we can help them. Um, if your student is struggling in a class, if they're struggling personally, um, we are sort of the liaison for a bunch of different resources on campus. Um, if you go to our website, you can um, see a bunch of information. There's student FAQs and and parents. I I would recommend you know if your student is struggling in any area, you know. How, and I'm not obviously all areas, but housing, academics, roommate issues, um, questions about, you know, where they can maybe get an accommodation or something like that. They can start with our office and we can get them to the right place. So don't ever um, feel like you don't know where to go. You can always start with Crystal or Katie, one of the university advisors. And nothing is closer to the truth than what um, uh, Crystal just said. They are the champions on campus. They are wonderful. They will walk students where they need to be taken so that they can help resolve um, whatever is a concern. And I have a feeling it's not just students who are struggling who go to Katie and Crystal. It's all of them go there for a good time and a conversation and um, what she said, life coaching. So great, great resource to have on campus. And we're so blessed to have um, have them here. So with that, um, Erica. Hello, uh, my name is Erica Nelson. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, and I'm the coordinator of student academic support. Uh, so basically what that means is I oversee all of the variety of programs for academic support that exist outside of the classroom. Um, so mostly that's tutoring. That's why Sadahi is here. She's one of our fantastic tutors. Um, so we offer, you know, the one-on-one -on -one kind of tutoring sessions, which kind of are sort of the bread and butter of what I do. Um, but we also have a lot of other things, like I do academic preparedness workshops on time management and study skills, um, individual learning coaching. Crystal and I work a lot together on helping students with kind of developing learning plans. Um, we have weekly drop-in hours. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff that we offer to kind of make sure that students always feel that support, that academic support, in addition to what they get from their uh, professors, so. Thank you, Erica. So just, just so you know, um, I didn't wanna leave Erica out of all the accolades. She is a newer uh, person on our campus and she has won all of our hearts, uh, just as Katie and Crystal have, so thank you. Um, I think we would like to have families um, write in their Q&A, uh, their questions in chat, and I can 
feel those questions and uh but before that maybe a little bit more detail of where you're located what you do um so that um families can think about what questions to ask and um maybe even invite Sarai to share some of her cadet experience a little bit and uh how the rigor of this uh of the curriculum is, is something to be reckoned with so um, before and parents and families could be typing in their questions while uh, you share a bit more. Thank you. Sorry, jump in. Sorry, sorry. I was like, is, is that my time to go? <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely the one thing that um, I will say, especially being like a student on campus, is that I always see that there's not a lot of students kind of going out and like finding or like knowing that we have the resources on campus even though I feel like we like put it out there so much and whether it's like we see it on campus or you know like our Instagram posts or during announcements during formation you know I feel like it's always said in one way shape or another but people still don't go to kind of like um get the help that they need so like you know especially like as a parent since you know um you guys are in here I would definitely recommend, especially now that you guys have a little bit more information, is that when you guys do get on campus is um, check into like, oh, hey, well, I know that this office is over here. Let's go check it out. I know that the tutoring center is over here. Let's go check it out. Because especially, you know, it, I get it. I was like that with my dad as well. I was like, dad, I'll figure it out. Like, it's OK. Like, I'll do it, you know, but it, it can be a little bit more encourage, encouraging and it's also a little bit less intimidating when you kind of already know where the offices are from like right off the bat then you're it's like two days into the semester you're trying to figure out your class schedule is messed up and you're like I have no idea where to go right now but with that said everyone on campus is super 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 willing to help not only the wonderful people we have here but I mean the professors as well like every single professor that I have had on campus, super welcoming, super nice. Their office is literally always open. They say they have like office hours posted, but there's been more times than not where I'll kind of knock on their door outside of office hours. And even then they'll be like, yeah, sure, come in. Like, what can I help you with? You know, so when I tell you that there's like a lot of resources and a lot of help on campus, like as a student who's been there for four years now, I could definitely like back up that statement and say there de there's so many things and then especially with like so I'm an engineering student engineering student I did come in as business my first year which is why I have this extra semester that I'm doing right now but even with that I remember going to um Katie and she was the one who helped me figure out how to get everything went in there for a short conversation and she was like super nice super welcoming helped me out with everything told me where to go tell me what I needed to do and all I like literally within that week I'd already submitted my paperwork and I was just waiting for a response so little things like that um super super nice and yeah but if you guys have any questions before it because I could keep rambling but I won't <laughs> that's that's like my 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 um my weak point but yeah thank you Sarai and um trust us uh we did not pay her to say all these nice things that's her experience um fortunately um so we have a couple questions and then I have a, a few that might get the conversation, keep the conversation going. The first one is our drop-in uh, tutoring hours complimentary. Yes, every aspect of the tutoring program is completely included in, in the student's tuition. So it doesn't matter how many appointments they go to, how many drop-in hours, it is all totally included. So that includes, we have um, the drop-in hours, which just to kind of provide some clarification, um, don't require an appointment. Um, so those hours are posted at the beginning of every semester and we have them for kind of the high touch subjects um business writing engineering math and marine transportation um but then we also offer the one-on-one -on -one tutoring appointments which are um, scheduled so the student will know exactly when it's going to be they can pick the time of that um so that's kind of two different ways that students can get that tutoring support other the drop-in hours which are set time weekly or individual appointments so both of those are options and you can take both um, I'm just going to add one more thing. We also have the supplementary instructors, which is, um, I'm also a supplementary instructor, um, which is basically, it's like an additional tutoring, but it's more like of a group tutoring session. So like, I'll go into the class, I'll introduce myself, and it could be, there's a variety of subjects now, and I know we've added a couple of them as well, but it's basically just like, we kind of go in there, we're not teachers, 
but um, like I said, it's more like of a group tutoring session. So if we know, if I know that, hey, they're going to have an exam this upcoming week, then I could focus kind of like these little sessions that we have because the sessions are weekly. And usually I'll try to get with everyone in the class to be like, what, um, what time works best for you guys to try to get like as much attendance as, pos as possible. And we'll either go in there and kind of just answer any of their questions that they have regarding the class itself. Or um, I also, I'm in contact with like their professor as well. So they could give me like their exam packet from past years and we could go over it and um, solve all those problems as well. So it's awesome. And everything's free, like Erica said. Thank you. How do students opt out of Math 100 if they have taken an equivalent class at a community college? Um, if Crystal, you're going to address that, uh, could you also talk a little bit about transcripts? If I got a few um, queries about folks wanting to um, find out if their student had uh, their transcripts were received, is there any way we can let students or families know how that works also? Thank you. Yeah. Um, if a student has taken an equivalent community college class, they um, should be opted out of that course. Um, if they're seeing it appear in their schedule, then maybe we haven't posted their transfer credit and that's still processing. So admissions, post transfer credit, I know they're still working on some if they've come in after mid-July. Um, and so um, the easiest way to tell yourself if your transfer credit is posted is you can go, the student can go into their PeopleSoft Student Systems Student Center. There's a drop down where you can select transfer credit report, and that shows all of the transfer credit. If it's blank, it means that the transfer credit hasn't been posted, and you can go ahead and email admission at csum.edu and just make sure they got your transcript. Um, if that doesn't mean you can't make changes to your schedule right now, if you want any help with that, me and Katie are available by appointment and the link is on the website I put in the chat to make an appointment with us. So if you want us to look over stuff that you could take while you're waiting for your transfer credit to get articulated, I wouldn't recommend dropping anything until you know for sure the transfer credit has come in. You know, we have particular math classes. Um, so if you're an IBL student, you can take college algebra, but if you're a marine transportation student, it's got to be college algebra and trig. So don't drop anything until you check with maybe an advisor or that transfer credit post. Um, and yeah, available by appointment if you have further questions or shoot me an email at advisor at csum.edu and I will put that in the chat. Um, one more uh, for you, uh, Crystal. Uh, could you tell uh, families a little bit more about university advisor, which is you and Katie, versus an academic advisor, which is assigned to the student based on their major. Yeah, definitely. Um, Katie and I are the professional advisors, and we are sort of the experts um, about the CSU. Um, so we're really on top of curriculum roadmaps, you know, requirements to graduate from a four-year university, um, great with forums, great with policies, so we can walk a student through all of the nitty-gritty stuff like what is, why do I have to take this GE class? Um, faculty advisors are assigned to each student, and they're going to meet them during orientation. Um, I think on day three or four, it's a Wednesday, um, and they're their mentor throughout their whole time at Cal Maritime. So students are required to check with the check in with them once a semester to just make sure the check the classes that they pick are the correct ones, and then they can ask questions and get to know them. Um, so as you learn the curriculum, you know your career path starts to become a little bit more clear. So what does that industry look like? A lot of our, I should say, our faculty advisors are the professors that teach in the major, and they have a background in those fields. So it's really cool. Um, you're you're given a mentor, essentially. So I'm good with all the academics and cap campus resources and your faculty advisors are, are your career and um, major experts. They've lived the life of a marine transportation, um, you know, ship agent, all of those oceanographer researcher, all of those roles. Thank you very much. Uh, and I believe your students are required to um, meet with them once a semester at a minimum in order to be able to register, correct? Okay. 
um, parent questions and not Vanita questions. Uh, my challenge with my student um, is to remind him of the advantages and wisdom of networking. And networking includes see seeking help and assistance. Seeking help is its own skill. And perhaps that's a good way to present it to the student. Absolutely, Christopher. Uh, advocacy is the name of the game. Um, when will students find out if their AP classes they've passed will be applied towards their credit and which classes they may apply to? I can take that. Um, same area. Uh, the transfer credit report in the PeopleSoft student systems will show AP credit also. I will also throw in the chat a link to the catalog. The catalog lists all of the classes we take AP credit for and the minimum score, um, which is uh, a three, a three or higher for most classes. So I'll throw the catalog link into the chat and you can kind of preemptively see if it will come over. Um, make sure you send those scores though. They're not automatically sent to us by College Board. Um, Mac Air 13-inch, um, is that sufficient for their time at Cal Maritime? Um, I'll, I'll answer this one if that one's okay. Um, it depends what major, I would say, because, so I had, I think I had, like, a MacBook Air. I think I had, might have had the same one. Um, and that took me, basically, I was fine all the way up until maybe, like, my junior year where I chose to get um, a Windows laptop just because, like I said, as an, enge as an engineering student, there's certain programs that just become easier to work on a Windows than it is on a Mac. There are like MacBook emulators that allow you to run the same programs um, that you would on a Mac, on, on, I mean, on a Windows on a Mac. So it's definitely um, a possibility. Um, however, I know that there's like a couple people who um, had MacBook Airs like going into like their junior and senior year that did run into like a couple of trouble, but there's plenty of computers on campus that have the exact same programs, whether that's in the library, in the computer lab, in the C Center. Um, there's definitely like a lot of different places that if you're running into issues, um, there's always another computer available, but if you'd like to have your own, depends what major it is. Um, I found that when I was like in my business, my business era that <laughs> that uh, MacBook Air was fine because I just, especially like when I'm just like typing stuff it's like don't really need to do anything but when we start getting into those more complicated um like specific programs for engineering um I ran into a couple of problems which is why I switched over but it, it's fine I just didn't want to deal with it <laughs> thank you um sorry um Question regarding ROTC. My student is pursuing the AF ROTC opportunity at Cal. They meet every Friday, but with Saturday alternate for two hours, the program suggests the two hour option is fine. But for later semesters, the full day Friday is best. Is any participant in this con conference aware of students who have done AF program? Um, I am an ex naval officer, but I recovered from the news. He prefers the air, prefers the air force. Um, can anyone speak to that at all? ROTC. I I'm not my wheelhouse, but I've worked with plenty of students who are you know NROTC, ROTC, um, and we can't guarantee Fridays off. Um, every time we sort of create a schedule, and that is the department and the registrar's office. It's gonna be based on forecasting how many students need a section. And if only 18 students need a section, there's only gonna be one section. There won't be three to choose from. So um, there's always a chance that there might be a class on any given Monday through Friday. We do not have um, weekend classes as of right now. When you're at the services fair uh, on uh, the 20th, uh, you might be able to ask some questions off um, the folks who are more e equipped with uh, answers for, for the program. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, there'll be a couple of people who can help out. So just 
hang tight. Um, what is your student's major, um, Mr. Bakes? Um, oh, uh, yes, his major is electrical engineering. I'm sorry, okay. mechanical engineering. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. Um, so sometimes SDCW classes are a big concern with taking time off. And if uh, your student is not um, taking a licensure uh, major, then it's maybe, maybe a little bit more flexible. Um, but we'll, we'll have some people on 20th for you to ask the question. Um, so to clarify, I'm going into GSMA ISS and I'm bringing a laptop that runs Windows. Will that work? Yeah, I answered it. It should. You'll okay. be fine. Um, while folks are thinking of um, some questions, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like for Crystal to share any details on what we call curriculum roadmaps, please. Definitely. Um, so we've uh, done the hard work of sort of laying out what the curriculum looks like. Um, so if you go onto the Cal Maritime website and you type in curriculum roadmaps um, and you there you can pick your entering year it that those are the classes required for your degree to finish um, so those are the right order of classes you want to make sure you take the classes in that order um, if we have any transfer student families in the house um, Katie and I are specialists in sort of developing graduation plans um, where students aren't on the four-year track um, we also have students who choose to go on a five-year track, right? The engineering degrees are 148 to 162 units, which is equivalent to five-year curriculum that we make possible in four, but it's like a lot of units every semester. So some students are more comfortable with switching to a five-year track. So um, the curriculum roadmaps are there to guide you, but Katie and I help customize your graduation plan based on your goals you want to finish earlier or if you know 18 20 units is too much let's give you an extra semester let's see what that looks like we can help uh customize thank you um often there's a stigma with tutoring like only struggling students go to uh to tutoring uh you go the night before your final i'd love to invite erica to share you know the true um value of tutoring and creating that um, connection with folks who not just tutor you, but others who go to tutoring. So could you share some wisdom around that? Of course. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely a stigma against tutoring. And it's, you know, that just for students who fail. Um, and basically, the easy answer is tutoring is for everybody. And yes, I mean, it can be really helpful for those students that are struggling a little bit. But it's also really helpful for the students that are doing really well in their classes, just to have a kind of conversation partner, to have someone to like work on group work with. Um, a lot of times the drop in hours are filled with students who are at various kind of academic points in their class, um, but they're all working together and helping each other. And so it's really about creating kind of a learning community is the language that I like to use when I'm talking about tutoring, um, because we're really, encouraging students to help other students. And it's not just about grades even, even though that is of course the ultimate goal of academic support, but it's also about developing those skills, kind of like that um, comment that one of the parents mentioned earlier that I just absolutely love, is encouraging students to seek help whenever they need it. And help can look a bunch of different ways. Um, sometimes, yeah, it is studying. And sometimes it's the night before the test. We encourage <laughs> students to not wait that long um but sometimes that is the reality and it's having other students there with you who sometimes are tutors sometimes are the drop in hour folks sometimes are supplemental instructors as Sada you mentioned um but it's about creating that community where you're learning from other students and feeling comfortable asking questions um I think that's another one of those stigmas against tutoring um that if you go to tutoring it means you don't know things no if you go to tutoring it means you know how to ask questions because everyone has something to learn that's why we're in college. That's why this, these students are in college. Um, so going to tutoring often really helps those students develop those, we call them help-seeking behaviors, um, 
but all students need to learn how to ask for help and how to articulate what it is they don't understand because that is ultimately how our students succeed. So our tutoring program really, we uh, I train our tutors heavily to inculcate that in our students to learn not only, hey, let's teach you the basics of Math 100, but Sadie also talks to her students about how to talk to your professors, um, how to do kind of some of those college life skill things that our tutors are really wonderful at sharing. So we try actively to work against some of those tutoring stigmas, but that's also really helpful um, for the parents too, to encourage your students to go to tutoring. You can hear from, from my lips, from Sari's lips, um, that tutoring is for everybody. And I can genuinely say that a lot of diverse students regarding grades, identity, everything, go to tutoring. So if you can encourage your student to attend, um, regardless of if they're not doing well or if they're doing really well, um, tutoring can always be helpful, so. And um, I think Erica is always on the lookout to recruit tutors. If that's your student, they should go figure out how the system works on our campus and maybe they wanna throw their name in the hat to become a tutor. Um, and last time I looked at all of this stuff, it, it, it's, it's researched and proven that when you teach someone else, that's the best way to learn. So if your student just goes there to show off how good they are at what they know, they are learning to get and getting better. So another thing to keep in mind. Can I add, um, yeah? just, I've just noticed Erica's presence has made it my life so much better, but um, two things. I, I think that there's also a level of like work smarter, not harder. And so if you get stuck, tutoring is where to go. Um, don't spend three hours trying to figure out one problem. Like, mm. it, let's go get help. And then you teach it back to the tutor. And now you have the foundations to do the rest of your work. So it's not admitting defeat. Like, it's getting some support and just strengthening um, your ability to do great work. So um, I, 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 everybody that goes to tutoring, I, I would say, doesn't regret it. <laughs> Um, and the offerings that Erica kind of talked about workshop wise, I am 36 years old and I just learned my learning style. Um, I just learned that I get overwhelmed by textual learning. And so when I read lengthy emails, like no wonder I'm freaking out and like I have to print them and highlight them, right? I'm not that learner. And so it's funny that Erica presented recently and I've learned even in my professional role, like, wow, I Need, this is extra work for me and that's okay. And this is how I communicate and learn stuff. And so this is what I can do when I'm in those situations. These are the tools I can use to better understand when this information is presented in this way. So the workshops are so helpful and, and I'm learning stuff still. Um, usually during these sessions, um, there is a there is one where we invite our accessibility and disability officer uh, to come in and um, share what they do and how they support students who might have learning differences. But currently that position is vacant and um, yet we want families and parents to know that we want to be supportive of students who have those uh, differences. And um, Katie, Crystal and Erica um, are great to kind of be a starting point and uh, can, um, they, fill in until we fill in the position uh, to help out in any way possible. So if there's a family uh, on this call that might have a student who has either used those services at their um, high school uh, or they find out that they might need them once they come into this new environment, it's definitely a great idea to start with one of the three and uh, they'll help uh, identify the best route until we hire the ADSO person. So apologies for that little, uh, bit of a gap in our, in our um, division right now. Um, is there a summer class to recover credit in case there is someone who do, doesn't pass? So I do, so we don't offer a ton of summer classes. Um, a lot of our students are doing summer requirements like crews, international experience, or their internships. Um, but a big part of my job is helping students find classes that will transfer over. So I help students, you know, look at their local community colleges. We read the course descriptions. Um, 
it's the right unit, it sounds right, let's submit a form to get it approved, it comes back approved, let's get you registered. So I help find those um, opportunities uh, if we don't offer them. Yeah. So um, as a rule over summer, once the once commencement happens and the ship takes off um, for cruise, uh, our campus it is not an active um, classroom. It's uh, the classroom has floated away, so to speak. Uh, the ship has left and the campus uh, is, it, it, we don't host any classes here. So if anything needs to be done, like Crystal pointed out, it will have to be at a community college um, or somewhere else that can uh, transfer over. And before uh, you pick your own school to take those courses, um, please talk to Crystal and Katie um, because not all courses are transferable. So please keep that in mind as you select them. Uh, I have an AP credit question. When and how will um, a cadet know if the units apply? Yeah, so um, AP credit, I threw that link in the chat. You can check and see if your AP credit um, will come over um, based on the type of test that you took and then check that PeopleSoft Student Systems uh, Student Center transcript credit report. Thank you. Um, I know we um, block register all our incoming students. Um, and often there are questions I might already have had a few um, about changing courses and making all those adjustments. Could you speak a little bit about why block registering and what the options are during a week? Yeah. So you are all going to get an opportunity to meet with your, so let me back up, why block registration? Because we saved those sections for you. We want to make sure that you, um, the class isn't full, right? So we put you in all the classes you need to be able to graduate in four years. Um, and for transfer students, we have the chairs look at your transfer credit, and then they put you on a path to graduate as soon as you can. Um, and that might be two years, two and a half years, three years, depending on if you're how much credit you came in that applies to the degree that you were admitted into. Um, so we block register you to make sure you get all of the classes that need to keep you on track. And you are welcome to move things around um, and you'll get a chance to on Wednesday. I think it's the 25th, maybe it's the 23rd. Um, you're gonna meet with your faculty advisors and your department chairs and they have a whole hour session to help guide you through like, if you want to change something, let's look at what that looks like. Thank you so much. Um, while families are thinking of any um, questions related to our speakers today, I want to make a couple of plugs. Um, I was asked by our director for health services to share with fam families a link where you could complete the form for insurance waiver. So how the school works is we bill you for um, the school's insurance. And if you already have your own insurance, for example, Kaiser, um, you need to fill out that waiver and send it out uh, so that we can remove that charge of the insurance from your billing. Um, I've, in, uh, I've added the link in the chat. So please find that and complete that form if you haven't already done that. That was plug number one. Plug number two was, um, as always, you're invited to join the Facebook uh, Keelhaller family group. There are a couple of questions that you must answer to get accepted into the group. For um, So please do answer those. We want to be sure that we're inviting parents into it and not students or other folks. Uh, we want to keep this focused on um, communicating with families to say, here's what's going on, share some pictures and all of that good stuff. So please do answer those questions as you um, try to join the group. And the third thing is um, we're trying our level best to capture um, students coming into the institution uh, who are legacy students. So we've created a, a very brief form that the link I shared again in chat. Um, and it requests your contact information along with any affiliation with someone who's already uh, been on our, cam uh, on, our, um, on our campus as an alum. So if you could fill that out, that would be much appreciated. 
And with that, those were my three plugs. And um, now we have a question. Do the workshops help students learn their learning style? Erica. Yes, they do. Um, so I offer uh, three different workshops throughout the course of the fall semester. Um, one of them is time management skills, which sort of helps students literally plan out their schedule so they're not doing that cramming right before a test. Um, and I offer a study skills workshop to really help students figure out how to, as Crystal said, work smarter, not harder. Um, and then the last one I offer is a workshop exclusively on learning styles. And so I help students walk through how they might learn best, um, understanding that learning styles are not, I always make the joke, it's not like your Hogwarts house. I don't know if anyone here <laughs> reads Harry Potter anymore, um, but helping them understand that it's not an end all be all, you're this category or nothing else, but more helping them see here are the different strategies I can use because that's the way I understand information best. And learning styles is the best way to kind of capture that. But yes, is the long answer <laughs> to your question. Thank you. Um, there's a question that I, we might, none of us might be best equipped to answer, but I don't feel that two insurances um, are necessary. You, uh, If you have one that wor that's worked so far, we'll continue to work for you. Um, I just want you to know that in included in your um, in your billing is what is called a health services fee, which is different than an insurance premium. So that health insurance fee allows you to go into uh, the health center on campus at any time that you're unwell or feeling like something you're coming down with something and get um, get some care. Uh, that's above and um, it's it's over and above what your insurance might uh, even have. So if you have Kaiser and Kaiser is about 15 minute drive from uh, the campus and you have the sniffles, you don't necessarily need to go to Kaiser. You could go to the student center and get some uh, symptom relief from them. Uh, similarly, if you uh, have sprained your ankle and you need someone to, you know, take care of it. It's a small injury. Our, our um, student services, health services will take care of it. Um, however, if you need follow-up or you, if we find that it needs an x-ray, that's when your insurance will kick in and you'll go to Kaiser and get your x-ray and your follow-up from there. So um, whatever insurance you have should suffice. However, I'm not the best person. Uh, feel free to contact someone at the health center and get a um, uh, even more detailed response from them, Kate. Um, I will put the uh, the waiver in there again. Are there over-the-counter meds, Tylenol? Uh, yes, you may uh, get those from the health center. Uh, they won't just hand them out. They will check out the student and um, give you an appointment, make sure that's what you need. And once they've determined Tylenol is going to do the trick, then they will provide you with some over-the-counter medication. Um, I did put the Student Health Center waiver uh, in there uh, for those of you who might want to consider completing that. Can I, um, uh, totally off topic than medical stuff right now, um, but can I just go back to the tutoring stuff really quick and add something? Okay. Um, yeah, so another thing that I wanted to add is that the best thing, or at least the thing that I really like about Cal Maritime is the fact that the classes are super, 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 super small. Sorry about that plane that's going over me. I hope you guys can still hear me. I can't control that. But um, yeah, is the fact that the classes are super, super small. And because they're so small, even if like, you know, I get it, you might be a little bit intimidated. Oh, thank God. Thank you. You can't hear the plane. Okay, awesome. But um, even if like you're a little bit intimidated or your students a little bit intimidated to go get tutoring um, at first, every single person, when you come into your freshman class and you know, as an, as an engineering student, you're in division 4E, usually the way that classes go, going back to like the curriculum that um, Crystal was talking about earlier, is that it also asks you for your division because certain divisions will take certain classes at like different times. So like division one and two are usually taking the same classes and division three and four are usually taking the same classes. So, you know, you get to know every within, you're always with your division, especially during O week, that's when usually all the bonds like form. It's like super, super strong. It's so cute. And then, but even then is that you're, you're, 
doing all these classes and you're going with the people who are in your division. And then, so it really helps because, you know, as a freshman, you're like, oh, I don't really know anyone, you know, whatever. And you realize that you're taking a class and then two hours later, you're taking the same class with the same group of people that you start to get to know people and you start to build relationships and kind of like connections and hey, um, I was struggling with this, but I saw that you like you got it in class. Do you mind explaining it to me? Or even as a tutor, there's been times where it's like I've had groups of students like one out. I'm expecting one student to show up and they'll email me and be like, hey, is it OK? Me and my other friends come like we're all stuck. Yeah, no problem. Bring everyone along, you know. So um, it's like really nice because even like in the bigger um, sessions, like the supplemental instruct instruction sessions that I ho um, that I host as well. Like, I, like they said earlier, like people who like either know the subject and they're really good are in there. People who like kind of get it, but need a little bit extra help are in there. So there'll be times where it's like, even if I'm talking about a subject up on the board, like in the back, I'll see little conversations and I'll see like one person helping the other, you know? So it's like really nice to see that there's definitely, because the school is so small, it definitely becomes a really like tight knit community. And especially within the divisions and within the majors, everyone's gone through it and even like with your upperclassmen um upperclassmen will always help like anyone below them you know it's like I've had um some of my friends that are juniors that were juniors last year while I was like taking my senior classes um they'd be like hey I know you already took this class can you help me out and I'm like yeah sure no problem this is in this even if they didn't want to go to tutoring or they did go to tutoring and x y and z um but that's one thing that I really wanted to ask. It's it's like super, super beneficial. And I definitely, from my other friends who have gone to bigger colleges, I have never heard them speak about experiences like that. Even with people who like, they sit in the same row as like during their lecture halls, you know, cause you go in there, you don't talk to anyone, but in these you're kind of forced to talk to everyone because there's only like 10 people in the class. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And of course, RIE has held uh, some leadership positions over the course of her time and so she really understands how the uh, core structure works and um, maybe she can very briefly um, talk about how the core is um, divided in divisions and and the, uh, companies and then divisions really fast and then uh, I have another question to answer there. Yeah so um, I really hope that everyone's aware by now that it's a military style school, but not a military school. I say that because there's a lot of people who um, freshmen who I've spoken to who are like, oh, I didn't even know that I had to do this every day, you know? But just to get that out there, we're a military style school, but not a military school. So we do have that same regimen. We're at the very, very top. You have um, your executive staff. So that's core commander, um, core executive officer, and core operations officer. Then you have your three company staff. So the companies are divided from NPM, which is all your um, GSMA, um, oceanography, business students. You have your um, engine um, engine company, which is every single different type of engineering. And then you have your deck company, which is all the marine transportation students. And within the comp and then within your company staff, you have same thing, company, um, company officer, company executive officer, company operations officer, so on and so forth. And then within each company, there's four different divisions and each four divisions, same thing, have their company, company office, I mean, oh my God, divisional officer, um, executive officer, and then operationals officer. So you kind of have like that chain in command and usually on a more, what I would say like day-to-day -day basis, because during formation specifically, you're in, you're interacting a lot more with your divisional staff and your divisional staff is always there to help every single student with any single problem. You see them three times a week, you go up to them after formation before um, or before formation, but um, everyone in those positions is really, really um, there to help you. I know because I've held two positions in the core. I've been a divisional officer, and then I've been uh, last year I was the core executive officer. So we're all here to help. Thank you. So there are twelve divisions altogether, and your student at the lowest level is part of that one twelfth of the student population, and then goes into a third of the student population. So there's many um, existing groups that they can immediately belong, in, belong into and then they can form more groups and identities and how, depending on how, um, you know, what their interests are and all that. So um, thank you, Sari, for sharing that. Um, 
I have a question from Natalia, um, also kind of health related. And of course, yes, you may make a first aid kit with um, some emergency stuff that the student can have in their room. Absolutely, that's not a problem. Um, we're looking at uh, finishing uh, our hour soon. Um, and as always, I um, off offers any participant who's not been able to write into chat for any reason, they want to unmute and ask their question, uh, please do so now. Uh, and we'll give it a minute for anyone to um, unmute and ask and then go back to the questions that are being asked uh, in chat. All right, how frequently does the cadet meet with their advisors? I can take that. So required once a semester, um, as often as they'd like for faculty and Katie and I are not assigned to anybody and you can come see us as much as you want. Um, you'll learn in orientation how to meet with us. So we've got similar to the tutoring structure, we've got drop-in hours at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, in the lab building, and we have appointments, um, and then we'll try to be in your spaces. Uh, we'll see you at um, orientation and first year seminar. So yeah, drop in appointment, come see us anytime. Thank you. Um, off topic, um, is we do not, sadly, we do not accept any um, shipments prior to student arrivals. However, once they're here, and if you're thinking about sending uh, packages, care packages, or follow-up stuff um, that can be sent to uh, their name, their mailbox number, which they will be provided uh, when they get here. Uh, and also, um, the address is One Morrow Cove. Um, it's not 200 Maritime Academy Drive, as you might think. Um, I've got it in um, chat. Um, so no packages before they get here. I'm so sorry. Uh, but afterwards, one more co with their name and their mailbox number works. Um, I had something I wanted to share, but now I've lost it. Um, oh, I didn't spell, spell Vallejo properly. Duh. On the days of orientation, are the, student, are the students able to receive a hard copy of their class schedule? I'm sure we could print it for them. Um, we'll probably point them to how to check it online and then take a screenshot. I think we all have our phones on us at all times. And a, a lot of students make it their background photo, which is funny, um, at least for the first two <laughs> weeks. Um, but having a screenshot of it or even making notes in your phone, something that's on you at all times that you wouldn't forget up in your room is probably preferred. So we'll definitely go over that and show you how to take, you know, how to save it to your phone and stuff. Any last words from Erica? Just encourage your students to seek academic support before they think they need it. Um, that's always really hard when we get students who come to tutoring when they're not doing great in a class um, and kind of think that tutoring might be kind of miracle cure. And, you know, tutoring does a lot and it's super helpful, um, but it is really hard when we get students who come to tutoring like right before finals or right before midterms and have sort of just realized that they need some help. So that's part of why I always say that tutoring is for everybody because you never know when you might need a little extra support. Um, so I really just encourage your students to attend tutoring, drop in hours, um, make an appointment with me even if they wanna kind of create a kind of study plan to make sure they stay on top of things, especially for those first year students. That is really, really key. Thank you and become a tutor. Um, Sarai, any last words? 
um just be super encouraging especially like that first day um if you're overwhelmed just imagine how your students feeling I feel like that's definitely a big one especially when it comes to all aspects you know you might not be able to see everything the first day but I promise you that that student will get around to it um but just keep them in mind that it's a big change for them as well um so just I would say just be mindful of your um of your students feelings and how they like how, how they might be doing that day because I've been a part of like a couple different orientations and especially during that week and that day it's like I've seen so many students who come in and they're stressed because like their parents telling them and I'm like I get it I get it because my dad was like that too super concerned hey let's go do this hey let's go do that when it's like when you first get there um Thankfully, it wasn't my first time visiting the school. I had already visited it once uh, before during like those, um, like that day that we had. Um, but for a lot of them, it is their first time on campus. So it definitely can be a lot, like very, very overwhelming. Um, so just um, be patient with them <laughs> because even though they're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Like, it, it's not that they like kind of don't care. It's just kind of like, whoa, I need to take a minute. And another thing that I do want to add is that um, as mentioned before, it's we are we try to get everyone out of the school within four years, and especially like as um, Crystal mentioned earlier, as an engineering student at, at least, you're taking like 160 or who knows how many. But I could tell you that you're taking at least the minimum of 18, if not 19, credits a semester, and a lot of those classes, it's not three credit classes because they there's this fun thing where a lot of those classes are one credit. And they're three hours long <laughs> so a lot of the labs are like that it's like that at every school i get it um but there was like for example my junior year i was taking 12 classes a, a semester so if you're not aware and you're an engineering student that's how it may be but like i said there's so many resources in, on campus a lot of professors so junior year as an met student's the hardest one but all my professors were like hey i already spoke to blah 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 um they're gonna have their midterm next week and we're gonna have ours this week so that way they kind of stagger out all the exams and you're not getting bombarded with like five different classes. But um, I've also seen like, you know, a lot of my friends kind of go get overwhelmed and choose to go that five-year track. Um, but please, if your student ever comes to you within these next four years and says, hey, I know I want to get out of here within four years and you want me to get out of here within four years, but mentally and like for myself, I need to do five. Um, just Just help them and support them with that because Again, even though it's a super small school, we have any like so many resources on campus. I do get it. And like I live six hours away. And sometimes, you know, you can't help it. It does get lonely. You just feel like, wow, like I'm just constantly being buried in my books. And it can take a toll on some people for that. So as a parent, if they come to you, it's like, I need to do like five years. Like I'm so sorry. Just be like, okay, that's fine. Like whatever else um you need to do. But yeah. That's what I want. You want to tell families if you can keep your phone with you at all times? Yes, you can keep your phone on you at all times. Uh, there's are a little thing where it's like, don't walk with your phone in your hand, like don't look down. And um, it's actually in like the cadet handbook. You're not supposed to be like walking around campus with your phone or looking down at it and with no um, earphones. So that is another thing to just uh, keep aware about. But yes, you can have your phone on you at all times. Just don't be on it in class. So remind your students that because so I've seen it so many times where I'm just like, oh my God, dude, like, <laughs> what are you doing? But yeah. Thank you. Crystal, this one's for you. There is a TVA on the schedule on PeopleSoft. How is it? Yeah, if it's for a room number or an instructor, they might just be still shuffling classrooms or um, professor schedules. So it's been allocated, somebody will, you know, there's going to be a spot for it and there will be a person to teach it, um, but they're making last minute changes, um, which is a great point. You know, if you have your schedule or if, you know, you receive your schedule next week, always check it one more time before school starts. Maybe the classroom changed um, and just so double check that the classroom didn't move um, is a good life pro hack. Um, and I would just say for parents to, um, when you check in with your student, um, I think the conversation of not like, what are your grades, but how are you feeling about all of your classes? Because we can tell a lot from our gut feeling. Like, I actually don't feel super great about this class, and I don't know what my grade is, and that might not be the student's fault that they don't know what their grade is. Maybe the work hasn't been posted. So, 
they can come to me to help coach them on how to write a professional email or have maybe a hard conversation about, you know, like I think I did kind of bad on the last test. Um, what can I do better? And we can identify specific questions. I think it's really intimidating the first time you see a professor you think you're a burden like you don't want to waste their time you don't know the right questions to ask and so me and Erica and Katie can help coach you through like how to write that email um, or or how to have that conversation you're only going to walk away with tips like you're only going to walk away with like check out chapter three like read chapter three again and then let's talk about it because I think that's what you missed here like just go review that something like that um, so how are they feeling? Go see Crystal or Erica or Katie, <laughs> and they'll help you with the next step. Um, so grading uh, on a curve, uh, is that something that you can speak to Crystal or Erica? I know um, Sarai put in her experience, like it's individual faculty member, but anyone else have a thought on that? it's per the syllabus check the syllabus they'll tell you how they're going to grade they'll they'll usually say if they throw out one quiz if they're going to curve the final any other crazy syllabus sort of edits sorry that you've seen um those have just been like the main ones it's usually like we'll throw out your lowest score or whatever and but a lot of them like some of our professors have like but it's like I'll throw out your lowest score, but only if you submit all the homework and on time, you know, or if it's like they have like little just little things like that. But that's the most part. Another one that I've seen is you don't have to take the final if thank you. I just got them done. Um, <laughs> another thing that is um, like if you like three, if you get A's in three out of the four categories or whatever or A's in all categories then you don't have to take the final. But like I've said, it's kind of like up to each professor and a lot of the subjects kind of depend on whether or not they want to curve the final grade or not. Um, but it's all kind of like individual. But if you do go in and like talk to, talk to the professor, it's like, hey, I know I missed a couple of things. Can I get some points? I've seen um, a couple of my friends kind of get points back for going in and kind of like explaining their thought process to them. And um, that like boosts them up like a couple points and they got the grade that they wanted. I think the moral of the story is encourage your students to read the syllabus because it'll usually lay everything out. And some students don't realize that the syllabus is not just the schedule of what you're going to do, but kind of a layout of the whole class itself. So encourage your students to really read through the syllabus. And the attendance policy. Um, many classes don't have an attendance policy. Some do. Um, STCW, speech communication, if you miss more than five, F. So read the syllabus. I hope uh, families who were on the call took copious notes about all of this wisdom that was shared and uh, tips that uh, your students have resources and who to go to. Uh, easy to remember names, Katie, Crystal, and Erica. So uh, see them, they are located in the lab building. Uh, and always helpful. And um, it's 634. And I want to be, we're already beyond time, but I want to thank our presenters. Thank you, all three of you. You were a joy as always. And my favorite was Sarai joining us. Yay. Thank you. Um, and then uh, I'd like to also thank all the families who've taken the time to be with us. And um, as always, if you have any questions that you think of after the session, please. Um, email us at orientation at csum.edu and I'll be ha happy to send your questions to the appropriate department uh, or I'll make up some answers. I can do that. Um, and uh, we will see you next week on Tuesday, which is our last one. Uh, and that is going to be a very interesting session. It is uh, on sense of belonging and we'll have all the people who will talk about things that we do outside the classroom for fun and games and to keep the students engaged. So um, I hope you're looking forward to that one. And after that, we'll just be counting days um, to be on campus with that. Uh, thank you again, and we shall see you soon. Have a nice evening.
Thank you. Bye.